Last week, we started a series of messages simply titled, The Storms of Life. I talked about the two sides, and I don't have time this morning to get into that, but I talked about the two sides. You can find that on our YouTube channel. You can go out to our uh, uh, internet site, go to the media section, and you can find that. I encourage you to do so. Uh, the scripture this morning is found in Matthew chapter 14, verse 22 through 27. I'll be reading from the New King James Version this morning. Last week we spoke about the two sides. Today we're going to speak about the two choices. Are you ready to read this morning? Immediately Jesus made His disciples get into the boat and go before Him to the other side. Say the other side. The other side. While He sent the multitudes away. And when He had sent the multitudes away, He went up on the mountain by Himself to pray. Now when evening came, He was there, He was alone there, but the boat was now in the middle, say in the middle, in the middle. of the sea, tossed by waves, for the wind was contrary. Now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw Him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out for fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Be of good cheer. It is I. Say, it is I. It is I. Do not be afraid. And may God add a blessing to the reading of His Word. Praise God. Praise God. You may be seated this morning. As we look at this scripture we see that the disciples are in the middle of the sea last week we showed some pictures of the sea of galilee and the beautiful setting and the sereneness of that as you look at it, it is probably one of the most beautiful places that i have been to there uh, at tiberius on the sea of galilee and last week we spoke about the two sides the things that had happened and would happen. The, the, the feeding of the 5,000. And then the trip to the middle of the sea there. And what transpires there. But the reason why they don't want to get stuck in the middle. How many don't want to get stuck in the middle? Right. Is so that when they get to the other side, it's not just about somebody eating and again getting hungry later on. How many get hungry? Just a few hours later, you know what I'm saying? It's not about that, but it is about a, a work of God that will change a city, a multitude of people, lives being transformed, all of that. So we saw those two sides. But today I want to talk about the two choices. Yeah. We see here that the disciples are faced with two choices. Stay with me, I'm going to explain that. <clears throat> Jesus had commanded them to get on the ship yeah. even though He knew that a storm was, was raging, a storm was coming, and He said to them, get on the ship and go to the other side. Yeah. He required them to leave what they could see, the fish, the loaves, the excess, the blessing, the crowds, the satisfaction of life with the temporal to go and to see what they could not see, to experience that. You see, there are two choices in our life. One, to live by sense. Our sight, our hearing, our touch and our taste and our smell. How many uh, know what I'm talking about there? Uh, you probably learned about that in your science or your health class. And, 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 and what we have a choice, do we live by what we see, what's going on, how bad the world is, how extreme everything may seem yeah. to be? Do we live by what the devil has brought upon us and think that there's no escape or no choice? Do we live by that or do we live, saints of God, by the Word of God? Amen. Do we live by that Word? You see, the disciples had two choices. To, to, they, 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 could they have left? Could they have stayed there where it was great, where it was wonderful? Or now they're stuck in the middle of the sea and the storm is raging and the winds are blowing and, and the ship seems like it's about to sink. But God gave a word to them. He told them, go before 
me. Somebody say, go before me. Go before me to the other side. When we begin to look at that, we determine that that is a guarantee of God that there is an other side. That there are two sides. But we have a choice today to live either by our senses or by the Word of God. A life either dominated by sight or a life dominated by the Word of God. A life dominated by sight yeah. or a life dominated by faith. Yes. Life directed by his, our senses or life directed by His Word. How many knows when you begin to live and be ruled by your senses, there's going to be irregularities, inconsistencies. You're going to get upset. You're going to be up one day and down the next because of the way you feel, because of what you see. But what I want yeah. you to know is we're not called to live by our senses. Yeah. Uh, and now, there, there's some good things about our senses. We're, we're not, we, we've learned not to touch something hot uh, because we have a, a, a sense of touch. And then we've learned not to, you know, jump off something high because God gave us a sense of fear uh, to not do that. But we must live not by uh, uh, the sense, but by Thank the Word. Yes. I find it very interesting that the Bible tells us now faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word. Yes. You, you, you see... If you don't have the Word, you're not going to have faith because you are constituted to live by the way you feel, by the way it looks, uh, by the way uh, the sickness is treating you, by the, by the way that your family is treating you, instead of by what God said in His Word, that there is another side. Praise God. And I can make it to there because I am keeping God's Word in my heart. Amen. So, so we're not called to live by our sense because it would be unreliable. Your senses are an unreliable source. God desires us to live not affected by the moment by moment the winds, the contrary circumstances. You see, your senses and your human reason won't let you go where God wants you to go. You will try to avoid. You'll say, no, God, I'm good right here. Yeah. I, it's, it's okay. Sometimes we even say, oh, God, I'm good right here. When it's not even really good right here, it's just familiar. So we want to escape that and we want to trust in the Word of God. How many knows what I'm talking about this right. morning? So we have two choices to live by our sense or to live by our uh, the Word of God. You see... The Word will take you places that you can't go with just right. your senses. That's right. Your senses will, are not inclined to the spiritual realm. As a matter of fact, they're in direct opposition to it. When you simply lie on your own reason and your own senses, you're going to want an explanation for right. everything. How many, how many are there? Yeah. Uh, you're going to want to know why. Uh, you're going to uh, need to have just the right feeling to launch out. You're, you're going to need to, it to be uh, convenient. It's gonna, the circumstances are all going to have to line up before you launch to do something. But when God's Word says do it, uh, can I just say this? There are times when God says go that we don't need to question, that we don't need to uh, 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 form a committee about it, that we don't need uh, to ask for everybody's wisdom and everybody's direction. There comes a time when God says go that we just need to get on the ship and we need to go and we need to launch out and we need to do what God has called us to do. Can I get an amen? amen. You see, your senses will not allow you to go the place that God wants you to go. When you begin to follow the Word of God, though, His direction, then there's a guarantee of safety. Jesus said, go before me. Yep. He didn't say, go before me and, and die in the middle. He didn't say, go before me and, and have a shipwreck and have to swim to the other side. He said, go before me to the, somebody say it, to the other side. You see, 
With God, there is a certainty, a safety, a preservation, a consistency with the Word of God. Yes. Because the Word of God does not change. You're right. It's never altered by conditions, never altered by circumstance, never altered by what side of the bed we got up. Come on, you know what I'm talking about. Never altered by if we had enough coffee in the morning, never altered uh, by what the boss said about us, never altered by anything. The Word of God is consistent and true, and the enemy does not want you to operate in that. Right. He wants you to say, well, I just don't know. Maybe I'll do this. Maybe I won't. Maybe I'll, I'll go here. Um, today I feel like I'm supposed to go north. Tomorrow maybe I'm supposed to go south. No, God's Word is consistent and true and will take you to places. It always takes you beyond where you That's have right. ever been Amen. in your life. Yeah. God's Word is a faithful uh, it, it is your north star. It, it is the thing that you can lean upon. And the enemy doesn't want you to walk in that at all. Right. As a matter of fact, he's going to do whatever he can to get you absorbed by what you see. Yep. He won't want you to get your focus all messed up. Uh, but faith and, and sight cannot operate at the same time. Last week I said we many times think that faith and doubt are opposites, but that is not true. Faith and sight are opposite. What you see is not always what's happening. Can I get an amen? Yeah. You do not see the things that God is doing in the background. You don't know how God is laying it all out. You might, I, I'm not saying that I do either, folks. Sometimes we just got to get in the boat and decide that we're going to stay there. Yeah. We're going with Jesus. We're going with His Word. We're going to make it to the other side. Yes. Mm. You see, the human world is filled with doubt, confusion, unbelief. But God's spiritual world, it's based on His Word, His promises, His Spirit. Can I tell you, that's a good foundation. His Word. His promises. His Spirit. How many want to be on that kind of foundation? Amen? Not, not a shaky foundation, but a foundation that is based upon His guarantees. Now, let's look at this for just a minute. The disciples get a word. Go before me to the other side. What an awesome privilege that God is saying there's something besides what you're currently experiencing. Hmm. You, didn't, you, didn't, you didn't get that like I wanted you to get it. Uh, what a privilege for us to understand that I'm not always stuck where I am. God doesn't always uh, require me to stay where I am, but there's another side. Can I tell you, just like the disciples, for you there is another side, a greater victory, a greater impact, a, a greater deliverance. There's all of this waiting for you right. if you will decide, I'm not getting stuck in the middle. Uh -huh. I'm not getting to say that with me. I'm not getting stuck in the middle. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to launch to the other side. You see... So many times we look at what we see and we get all upset. Yep. Yep. I, I'm preaching myself, folks. You, you see, whether you know it or not, your attendance affects me and it should not. When we have 110 or so people, pastor, his emotions are flying high, God's moving, God's doing great things. And when we have 60 or 70 it's like, oh, what's going on, God? But I want you to know that His Word, His vision for you, His direction does not change based on the circumstances or the outward appearance. It does not change if He's called you, He's called you to go forward. Let me receive that today. You see, God knows the larger picture. He understands the greater future. Yes. And it's for those who will follow Him. Yes. There's, look at your neighbor and say, you've got a greater future. You've got a greater future. In order to follow God, 
though you got to have some desire yeah. and some determination. Yeah. Can I get an amen? amen. How, how many have been there? you got to have some desire and some determination. You see, our desire can be directed to God or to the world. And whatever it is directed to will determine your destination. That's good. You ought to write that down. Wherever my will is directed to, it will determine my destination. Right. You see, the will of man can either be directed towards fleshliness, acquiring or godliness. Right. It can be um, uh, based on the force of the enemy or the Spirit of God. Uh, our will is important. In the garden, Jesus said, not my will, but thine be done. Now, you're not better than Jesus. I'm not better than Jesus. That means that you and I are going to have a fight with our will. Yes. We're, we're going to have to fight and we can determine what way we're going to go by who we follow and what desires we follow. Yeah, right. You see, you have to have desire and determination. Jesus, in all of His goodness and all of His Godhead, human, all human, all flesh, said not my will, but thy will be done. Amen. So there's a fight with your will this morning. Yeah. As a matter of fact, if you want to win a battle, you need to learn how to say that. Say it with me. Not my will, not my will, but thine be done. Thine be done. Say it again. Not my will, not my will, but thine be done. You see, those are the words that will gain you great victories and great breakthroughs because we cannot help ourselves but to look at the circumstances around us, but we have to have a desire to continue to go forward for the Hallelujah. Lord. Hallelujah. You gotta have desire. Somebody say desire. Desire. You see, there comes a point in our life where our desire for the Lord must be greater than our desire for anything the world has got to offer. Right. When you and I were living for the world, the world is what framed and formed our ambition and our future. But when I was living, when I am living for the Lord, it's the Lord, His Word, His power, His Spirit that determines my direction. Right. I'm going Thank with God. the Lord. I, 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 I don't need to uh, form a committee. I don't need to ask questions. I'm getting in a boat and I'm going to the, the other, other side. side. How many is with me this morning? Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> many times... And it always seemed odd to me, but many times when Jesus was asked by a person to heal them, He would say, what do you, what would you have me do for you? I want to say, duh, He's blind. Duh, He can't, he can't walk. I, in, my, in my mind, but in the spirit realm, I understand that Jesus was saying, what is your desire? Yeah. What is your desire? We must desire the things of God. Yes. But desire isn't enough by itself. It's got to be followed by determination. Yes. What is determination? It's simply pressing and pushing through every adversity, every attack, every difficulty. It is saying, I will get to where God has directed me to go and nothing will stop me from getting there. You see, if you want to get where God has called you to go, you can't be timid about it. You can't be tentative, uh, tentative about it. You've got to go for it. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, just go for it. Say, I'm tired of waiting on you. Just go for it. <laughs> Come on. You see, the devil's going to attack. It's for sure. He's going to form strategies. He's going to put things in your path to obstruct you. But this morning, I want to encourage you. Hallelujah. Don't give up in the middle. That's right. I believe you're going to reach the other side. Amen. I believe you're going to make it. I believe God has a greater future for you yes. than your past. 
has ever been. How many believe that this morning? Amen. How many are determined to go to the other side? How many are hanging with Jesus, hearing His Word, believing that there's something greater? You see, if you lack determination, you won't make it to your destination. If you lack, put that up back there. If you lack determination, you won't make it to your destination. Without determination, you're going to meander around. You're going to lack purpose. You're going to lack vision. You're going to be indecisive. But I believe with all my heart that God has a day set before us, uh, an ordained yeah. tomorrow that is filled with divine possibilities, that is filled with divine encounters that awaits me, and I am absolutely determined that I am going to make it to my destination. Right. Mm. It's not time to throw a pity party. It's time to get some determination. Couple that with desire. And you're going to reach your intended destination. Not in the middle. Not worried. Not overcome by the circumstances. I want to challenge you. Go read John. It says that when Jesus got into the boat, that immediately, yes. say it, immediately, immediately, they were on the other side. You see, there is an acceleration when you begin to hear the Word of God. Yes. You, you, you need to get that. Write that down. Right. <laughs> There's an acceleration when you begin to hear the Word of God and act on it. Now, we have yet to talk about Peter acting on the Word. That, that's part three. Okay? But there is an acceleration when you begin to hear and act upon God's Word. Yes. There, uh, things just begin to move quicker in the spiritual realm. Many times we look at our circumstances and the hindrances and we think, why does it have to be so hard? Why are there so many things that confront me? Can I tell you there's a new way to look at them? There's a new way to look at it. It is simply a reminder that you have a magnificent future. If you didn't, the devil wouldn't fight so hard. That's right. Mm -hmm. He may. You know that. There's a magnificent future. If it weren't true, the devil would just let us go and do whatever. But he fights us all the way. He fights us to reach our intended destination. Folks, I am so hungry to get to where God wants me to get. What is the reason for the storm? What's the reason for the attack and the continued oppression? It's clear that there is a destination where there is a demonstration of God's power, Hallelujah. where so many people are impacted and transformed by the power of God, where lives are loosed from the power of the enemy, where regions are revolutionized and in the enemy's uh, hold is held back. You, you, you see, there is a greater destiny for us, not just, I'm not talking about you getting rich in this world. This world is fleeting. Uh, the, the, the Bible tells us that, that uh, it is just like a vapor or a breath. What I'm yeah. talking about yeah. is impacting somebody's eternal destination, that they would be saved, that they would be healed, that they would be filled with the Holy Spirit, that they would form a destination that is a place that you're going to as well. Ah, uh, one day the eastern uh, skies are going to open up and Jesus is going to descend upon a cloud and then He's going to call us away. But before right. that day, we need to make sure, folks, that we are reaching and transforming and changing destinies and lives and doing all that we can yeah. to make an eternal difference. Yeah. All right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, if the disciples had said, I'm just going to hang out here on this side where it's all good and we got plenty. Matter of fact, we got excess. We got these 12 baskets here. If the disciples had not obeyed, 
yep. they would never have reached the other side. Amen. You must follow the direction of God. Mm -hmm. You must have desire. You must have determination to get to where God is calling you. You see, when I wrote this down, it just made a fire light up inside of me. The devil cannot keep you from your destiny. That's right. Praise right. God. The devil can't do it. It, it doesn't, he can put all kinds of things in your path. He can disrupt you and, and distract you a little bit. But he cannot keep you from reaching your eternal destination. And as a matter of fact, the reason why the devil attacks you, the reason why it comes so hard against you, is that he is absolutely terrified of your future. Terrified of the impact that you will make as a child of God. Terrified that will transform a world, will change the destiny of yeah. yourselves and Woodford County and Scott County and Jessamine County. And, and, and Anderson County and Fayette County, all those counties that are surrounded by us, he is, he, he is just tore up. Yeah. Hmm. And can I tell you this? You look around and you see all the attacks and everything going on, and the devil wants you to panic. But he's the one that's really panicking. That's right, amen. Yeah. yeah. He's the one that's terrified. Yep. He's the one that knows you have a future that is beyond what even you have imagined. It is a greater place of destiny. That's right. And he is terrified. That the world will be, like I preached last summer, turned upside down, down mm -hmm. by God's children. You see, he's afraid of your future. Because you have a greater impact, a greater destiny, a yeah. greater victory, a greater deliverance. So don't be discouraged, folks. By the things you can see in front of you. Don't be depressed mm -hmm. by the consistent attacks. Don't be robbed of your future because the pressure today is great. Yeah. Tracy, you can come to the piano. Don't surrender to the pain, the disillusionment, and the pressure the night before your miracle. Hmm. Your miracle is coming. The devil knows it. God knows it. It's about time we get on the same page with God. Amen? Amen. It's coming. Somebody say it's coming. Amen. My miracle is coming. My miracle is coming. A healing is coming. A healing is coming. Deliverance is coming. Deliverance is coming. My family's salvation. Mm. Grab a hold of that, folks. Matter of fact, I want you to do that. Just reach up and grab a hold of it. Thank you, Lord. And say this with me. My family's salvation. My family's salvation. Is coming. It's coming. The people that I thought would never make it to God, they are coming. My miracle is on the way. Yeah, yeah. Jesus is standing beside me saying, It is I. Do not be afraid. Right. I am with you. Yeah. I am the I am God. Torah there is an attack in this last day hear me there's an attack because the enemy knows that he is a lack of time hold on believe grab a hold of that miracle and believe God Believe God for it. Somebody say that with me. Believe, Believe God, God for it. <laughs> Today is your day. Don't give up. Don't give in. Pursue the path. Today is your day to reach God's intended destination.
Last week, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, and I did this just a few months ago, declare that today is a miracle day. Yeah. <coughs> Time of fasting is over for most. Declare that today is a miracle day because God honors when you fast and you pray and you right. seek after Him and you obey His Word. And his, he, he, He's going to bless you, folks. I'm not saying uh, that every time immediately following a fast that it's going to happen. But mark it down. God does things when you fast and pray. That's right. I know it to be true. I've seen it. I've seen it in my life. I've seen it in healings in my body. I've seen it in breakthrough financially for the church and many other different ways. God simply moves when we are obedient, when we have a desire, when we have a determination to reach where He is called.